When author Matthew McKay's son Jordan was murdered, he set out on a quest to find out why we're here and what happens when we die. He became determined to connect with his dead son in any way possible. Matthew is not a psychic or a medium. Quite the opposite, actually. He's a psychologist with a deep love of science who never expected to take this journey. I recently had the opportunity to sit down to talk with Matthew about his new book, Seeking Jordan. I hope that you'll enjoy the interview. Matthew, your son Jordan was murdered in San Francisco in 2008. Please tell us what happened. He was on his way home. It was pretty late at night. He worked in Berkeley and he had come home on the BART. He had a bicycle and he biked back and forth to BART and then to work. And so he was on his way home riding his bike. And as far as we know, uh, three or four people were maybe looking for someone to prey on on that street. Um, somehow they got him off his bike. Um, they, there was a physical fight. Uh, at some point he broke away and was running down the street and he was shot in the back. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. It was, uh, and he managed to get a little further and uh, died on someone's doorstep. On the wow. And how old was he? 23. 23. Wow. I can't even imagine. And what inspired you to attempt to make contact with Jordan after his passing? I think I was so determined not to let him go that uh, that I would somehow hold on to a real connection to him, that, that I wasn't going to lose him and, and I was going to find a way uh, to keep him, not just in my heart, but to keep him in some kind of real relationship, a relationship that I could, where I could really still talk to him in some way. Mm -hmm. And so I started and I tried lots of different things. Uh, the first thing my wife Judy and I did is we went to Chicago and we met with a therapist there who had discovered a way of doing what he called induced after-death communication. And, uh, and it's based on, a, on an actual treatment process that I know and that I was kind of familiar with and comfortable with. Uh, and so we went through that experience. We had, took this long journey uh, and I did have the experience of hearing Jordan's voice. and. Um, he he has a this process is kind of remarkable because he works with vets a lot and he uh, in fact worked with the VA and um, what happened was that he uh, made a small variation of a treatment process that you know I know and it's used widely but uh, he stumbled onto something a little bit different and um, and vets who had these losses, the, the war, wartime losses, suddenly would either see or actually hear the voice of the person that they had lost. And they were completely naive, they didn't know about it. And in 91 out of 93 of these cases, they actually had this spontaneous experience. So I was really very persuaded by that. Well, and what is it called? Induced after death communication. Mm -hmm. And it's based on something called EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. So it's, it's, a, it's a very cool treatment uh, for trauma. And then his adaptation of it uh, allowed people, I think it allows people to have an actual connection to the person they've lost. Mm -hmm. And that was my experience. I heard Jordan's voice. I heard it like a, he was sitting next to me. He had very th specific things to say things to convey to his mom and so for the first time I walked away from that with this feeling like I could, it's possible that I could make contact with him uh, that that I could have a relationship that was real mm -hmm. and so you know I, I moved on to other things I um, eventually you know we actually did uh, use uh, mediums Mm -hmm. uh, but 
the problem with memes is I don't feel like I'm having a direct contact. And, and we did have, I think, some important experiences, but I, I didn't feel like it was mediated through someone else. It yeah. was not my own experience. I was not really hearing from him. And eventually, I began working with a psychologist named Ralph Metzner, and his son had died, and he had developed ways of making contact with his own son. And he taught me a technique called channeled communication, uh, channeled writing, sometimes also called automatic writing. And it's pretty simple. I learned it quickly. It really, all it amounts to is um, having a, a, a brief period of meditation, um, and then you have some object, physical object that connects you to the person that you want to talk to. Uh, uh, a, a setting that's familiar and and that yeah, that you can use over and over again. So you go to the same place with the same objects. Uh, usually something that's focusing like a candle, and this meditation process. And then what you do is you simply write out the question that you have for the loved one that you want to talk to. And my experience was that. When I wrote out the question, immediately I had a flood of, of words that would show up in my mind that didn't feel like my own words. They felt like they were coming from somewhere else. And I just simply began writing the, writing the, the answers. Oftentimes the, it was coming much faster than I could write. And so it was so almost like downloading mm. uh, an experience of just a, a, sort of a, a sense of knowledge arriving and then having to find the words that would actually describe the, the knowledge that I was getting. Wow. And so I just started doing that. And um, I didn't intend to write a book or anything. I was just at, the, at that point simply encountering Jordan, asking him questions. I mean, just everything under the sun. I mean, you know, uh, you know, yeah, I'd, I'd be worried about his sister and what should I do about, you know, and or, or you know, uh, uh, you know, or sometimes things more very kind of spiritually th troubling to me. You know, you know how does how do things work? You know, on the other side and yeah. so forth. And so it was this gradual and accumulation of experiences of writing and listening and writing and listening and hearing. Um, and then uh, Ralph Metzner uh, suggested. He said, "Well, you know, you're." having this regular communication with him and you're getting you're li hearing some pretty amazing things about how things work on the other side and and why we're here and um, maybe you should write a book with Jordan and it was a, I, I was I, I was flabbergasted I was like, no that's <laughs> I'm not gonna write a book with my son who, who's passed away and he's on the other side I, I, I can't even imagine so my first reaction was you know that there's no way but so then the next day I went home, I had one of these sessions with Jordan and I asked him about the idea and he said, of course we can do that. And within less than five minutes he had outlined the entire book, all the chapters, boom, 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 and all the content of all the chapters. I, I couldn't even write as fast as I was getting all of the information. And it, it all, he just laid it all out exactly what the book would be and in fact that's what it, it was. I mean, uh, with the exception of the last chapter which he told me would come later. the. He gave me very, very much exactly what this was going to be. Uh, it was going to start with uh, uh, four or five chapters that were just talking about my search for him, and then the rest of it would be basically the fruits of my conversations with him, uh, divided into topic areas uh, about what life on the other side is about. And so that's what happened, and I was surprised, and yet it gave me this. Uh, this wonderful project with my boy yeah. that I got to do with him, and uh, and then the things that I started learning and hearing as as we moved through the book were it felt new to me. It felt surprising. It felt like not my experience or mm -hmm. not my thoughts, but something that was coming from outside of me. This isn't the first book that you've written as a as a psychologist and no. as the publisher at New Harbinger. No. You've written many books, so I'm curious how the process. I mean, I'd just like to hear you speak to how the process was different working with Jordan than in your other books. Well, I've written a lot of books in the field of psychology, and and you know some of them are professional books, some of them are based on on research I have done or done with others. Uh, I've done 
a number of randomized controlled trials that led to actual treatment methods that, you know, I've done books and uh, brought out into the field. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm used to writing about things that are based on science and on things that have some verifiability that, mm -hmm. that you can say, well, here's, here's some numbers, here's, here, here's an outcome measure that we can say, you know, a group of people who got this treatment really improved in a certain way. And so this is not what I'm used to. Uh, it's not what um, I know. Uh, I just entered a, another world that I had never imagined being in. And I found, as Jordan continued to just tell me how things work, uh, that I was just learning an amazing amount and also getting a kind of reassurance uh, about the nature of of life and death and and our purposes here that um, that was helping me um, in a way that I, I I would wish and hope that my psychology self help books would help others that, <laughs> that I was really getting something it was changing my life uh, it was changing my fear of death uh, it was giving me a clearer sense of why I was here and and how to even structure my days so that I could you know, I, I could live based on a, a clear sense of purpose. Mm. So I, um, while it's very different from anything I've ever done, uh, and it's not verifiable in the way that the science I'm used to can be checked and, and um, others, others uh, researchers can come along and say, "Well, we, you know, uh, let, let's let's run these numbers again. Let's let's see if this really works." But so it's it's not what I'm used to, and yet um, it's a kind of uh, research that it, we might call single subject research, or uh, the research based on on one one person's experience. And I I offer it very humbly in that way. This is based on my experience. Now, the truth is there are a lot of people who have had experiences in, in the afterworld and in communication with the other side that verify a lot of the things that uh, Jordan has said. Um, and so it's not that, you know, this is just a voice in the wilderness. I think, I, I think a lot of things that Jordan says are, are also familiar from what we learn from mediums and people who've taken the journey in, in near and near-death experiences and so forth uh, so it's consistent but he actually goes well beyond a lot of what we already know I, I think and he provides a, a much a depth of knowledge about the other side that's so clear and eloquent uh, that it felt to me as I wrote it down uh, that I feel like it it offers something of use to people mm -hmm. particularly people who have had a loss and are, are, are wondering, well, who, where is that person? What, what has happened to them? What is this life on the other side? Is it like the heaven that we learn about, the harps and angels, or is it, is it something else? Uh, so it offers a, a real, I think, a clear picture of what that life is on the other side. It also, it felt to me that, um, because I'm a skeptic and I, really have um, have had in most of my life very very little in the way of spiritual beliefs um, but it, but because I'm a skeptic it felt like it was for somebody like me mm. it was for someone who doesn't have a strong belief system but is curious and would like to know more about what possibly may be out there but also what why we're here and what our what our purpose is here? Why why we come to this planet? And a lot of those questions are are there. Jordan gives answers to those in the, in the book. What do you most hope that readers will take away from your book, Seeking Jordan? I think the the most important thing is to maybe begin to have a different relationship to pain. Um, 
The reason, I think, and what Jordan says to me is the reason we come here, uh, the reason we incarnate, the reason we show up in this very difficult planet, beautiful planet, but very difficult planet, um, is because there is pain here. In the life between lives, there isn't any pain. Things are kind of effortless. You know, you, love is, you know, the, the, the communications and love transpires effortlessly through telepathy. We, we just know how the other person feels. We, we, we feel known. We feel part of things. We, we, we feel supported by this vast community of souls. And there isn't pain in the sense that we know it here. And, but pain is what affords us opportunities to grow. Uh, struggling with things that hurt is how we evolve and develop as souls. And, and perhaps the greatest pain that we experience is loss, is th things that we count on and, 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 and love uh, taken from us. And, and that is necessary pain. On some level, we have to know, uh, we, we have to experience loss, even though it's illusory, even though that person is right next to us on some level, that soul is right next to us, uh, and we can communicate almost effortlessly if we just learn how. Uh, but still, the experience of loss is, is really crucial to our development. Um, and that pain of, of, of loving and, and, and then losing, and then st still finding a way to hold on to love in the face of the loss, for holding on to love um, even though that person can no longer be seen, even though you can no longer hear their voice, even though they can no longer touch you physically, but to hold on to that love in the face of the loss is in a tremendously important lesson that we have to learn. Yes. And I think that's at the center of what Jordan is suggesting, that, that our life here is about learning to love in the face of pain. And, and without pain, love would be effortless. We, we wouldn't learn much about it. But, but, but loving when it hurts, when it's hard, loving when the other person so deeply disappoints us or we can't even see them anymore, um, loving when we're scared, uh, those are the, the, that's, that's what we're here doing. And, that, and that, 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 those lessons cannot be learned anywhere else. They can't be learned in that life between lives. Wow. Well, thank you so much for daring to love as greatly as you have to bring this book forward and just sharing it with all of us. Thank you. Thank you.